Hey, how are you? Hey, neighbor. What's going on over there? <laughs> What's over the fence? <laughs> what you got cooking on that barbecue grill? Hope you don't mind us snooping. <laughs> we don't mean nothing by it. We're just friendly. Mm-hmm. Just your neighborly blurry photos looking at you. Looking at you, wondering what's going on under that barbecue dome. Things just got real weird. And they're going to get weirder because this is Blurry Photos. Hey, I'm David Stecco. I'm David Flora. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Woo! <laughs> tap dancing, tap dancing. What's a, what's a barbecue dome? Well, I don't know. I was just supporting you as best I can. I was thinking of like the lid that comes down on the on the grill. Yeah, well, and, this, and well the, the, the Weber grill's dome. a dome. Yeah, yeah. I should have said Weber grill. Son well, of a gun. it's too late. There's nothing you can do about it. I can't take anything back. Nope, it's all on the record. You guys, you're in for a good show today. Oh man, we got a got a cryptid for you. That's right, an unknown animal that you may never have heard of. If you are from the United States or anywhere that's not Australia. <laughs> that's right. Called the bunyip. That's right. The bunyip. This is a real thing. Well, I mean, real is asterisk, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But it's a thing. <laughs> asterisk, not real at all. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is an actual subject of conversation in Australia. Yeah. How an, about that? An actual hidden creature. Yep. An unknown organic entity, potentially... Uh, inhabiting swamps, or as they call them in Australia, billabongs. Billabongs, which are uh, seasonal lakes yep. uh, that are formed from uh, oxbows and rivers. Huh? Oh, yeah. whoa! Hey, hello. Drop that. You dropped some geography on that. Way <laughs> to go, man. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to uh, open up the can uh, of worms on this? one? I will. Us? I will. And this 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 episode has its roots in the early '80s. I picked this subject because uh, when I was growing up. Um, there was a cartoon on HBO that was just like a movie called Dot and the Kangaroo. And it was like this weird um, live action animation combination <laughs> for the nation. Cessation transformation. <laughs> yeah, cessation transformation. Cessation. Starring Bashar. <laughs> um, and at one point, so it's about this little girl who gets lost, and she's living in the outback where her parents look for her ostensibly. Is her name Dot? Yep. Oh. Dot gets lost in the woods, and she makes friends with a kangaroo. And she meets all these other animals. And the, so the foregrounds, like all the, the players in this uh, cartoon movie were animated, but the backgrounds are all live action. So it's kind of like Roger Rabbit? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Um, and at one point, there's this part where she has to like sleep and... It's this whole sequence about the bunyip, and it's spelled B-U-N-Y-I-P. Um, go ahead and YouTube bunyip, and you'll <laughs> see the video. It'll pop right up there for you. And this sequence sodomized my brain. It <laughs> scared me so much as a child that I lost my mind about it. I couldn't, I mean... And watch it. It's creepy as all hell. Yeah. It's creepy. The song music, is scary. Yeah. yeah. There's like some, some really malevolent piano. And it's just... And, Strings it, that are... Yeah. Yeah, not common. Not your common uh, Boeing. Yeah, they were really, <laughs> really coming after the kids' brains on this one. And uh, and it's always stuck in my head. Now, the, the cartoon would have the bunyip be some weird shape-shifting beast that, that has just lived... You know, it's like the monster of the the outpack. Yeah, it's kind of like boogeyman kind of thing. Yeah, and I didn't learn until years and years and years later, but that there there is a very real history of the bunyip in Australia. Yeah. It is it is an Australian cryptid that may or may not exist. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's legendary and it's of uh, Aboriginal mythology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the word uh, bunyip itself. Is uh, it comes from the Wemba Wemba tribe of uh, the Ab uh, Australian Aboriginals, and it's there's not only a, a lot of lore within the Aboriginal community about it. There are cave paintings, yeah, um, and there are some amazing, and we'll get to them in just a little bit, but amazing reports about how these things are described um, <laughs> as Europeans started coming to Australia right. to unload boatloads of uh, rapists and thieves, right. Uh, the bunyip itself is said to be fiercely antagonistic to humans, mm -hmm. uh, defending its territory by causing nocturnal terror and eating people or animals in its vicinity. Uh, as we said, it resides in 
rivers, swamps, lakes, billabongs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we keep saying it, but uh, there could be, it, it could be bun yips. Right? Yeah, it, it, it it's not just like the Mothman. It's no. it could be like uh, um, uh, Bunyip as as, uh, as we say Bunyip as as we would say the dog. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> this 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 could be a very real animal. Yeah, let's talk about the appearance of this thing. Man, yeah, okay. Yeah. The, it's all over the place. Yeah, the descriptions of this are are everywhere. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> It runs the gamut from from mundane and like oh yeah that could be scary I guess to like this is a monster that is created for the rending of flesh from <laughs> yeah. bones yeah the, the the blood of the unbelievers flies out of its eyes all the time <laughs> uh, the general description of this thing is that it's large uh, it's four legged but two of its legs have flippers uh, mm -hmm. for feet it, it's walrus tusked. Or has some kind of uh, maybe boar-like tusks coming yeah. out of its mouth, uh, and it's also got a horse-like tail. Mm -hmm. Now that's the, that's the general kind of all-encompassing description. A lot of those run through a lot of the descriptions that that people have of it. Yeah, but uh, there are different different types of descriptions depending on who you ask. Uh, in the 19th century, a lot of people described it as having a dog-like face, uh, dark fur. Sometimes even grayish feathers, uh, and a duck-like bill. Yeah, right. you know, and you know that's in Australia. Anything can have a duck bill. That's true. You just never know. <laughs> the settlers that were coming in described it as as being about the size of a six-month calf. Uh, some of them described it as having a long, pointed head and a long neck, and uh, maybe even a shaggy mane. Yeah, so that, that sounds almost horse-like. There, there are also uh, there's a lot of discussion about the the teeth and the layout of the teeth, mm. um, and there's there seems to be the consistency is that they are unusual, that it is not a, a, a typical all the teeth fitting in the mouth scenario. Yeah, some are sticking out, right? And in some cases, they're considered to be uh, like almost like sticking out laterally, like yeah. the sides of like a sawtooth or something like that. One of the descriptions that I uh, was reading kind of files a little bit under platypus times it has uh characteristics of both a bird and an alligator uh <laughs> yeah. the head resembling something uh, close to like maybe an emu yeah um with these these weird side tusks these side teeth hanging out and then the 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 rest of the body uh and legs being more like an alligator <laughs> You even you even get some descriptions of it being kind of hippo or walrus like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, having scales like an alligator or a snake, having a long beak. <laughs> I mean, this thing is is just a, a kajiba jaw of of all kinds of. Oh, things. it really is. Which, by the way, I think is actually a part of Australia. <laughs> kajiba jaw. It sounds like an Australian word. It's in Queensland. Um, now, the one of the interesting things is that this is uh, something that the the uh, aborigines of Australia would try to explain to the English that came over. Yeah. And in almost frustrated terms, like, we don't know how you're not seeing these things. Yeah. Um, and whether that was said to scare them, um, one of the accounts, there actually was an interview by one of the local gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And not only he said, well, of course there's bunyips. Bunyip killed my mom. <laughs> Look at these scars on my chest. A bunyip almost killed me. Yeah. How have you not seen this thing? Right. Like the whether and maybe that was an attempt to frighten them off. I mean, it doesn't. It did not take uh, English colonials long to piss off the locals well, wherever sure. they went. So maybe they, at that point they were trying to scare them away, Scooby Doo style. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Turns out this uh, this continent's haunted, <laughs> <laughs> and they would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for that imperialism. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but he described them as being, you know, you know between ten and fourteen feet. <laughs> long sure that they were just these gigantic uh, uh somewhat amphibious creatures yeah. that spent most of their time in the water they would only come out when it was very very hot and even when they when they did they would the slightest sound they would get right back into the water mm. um, so they're kind of reclusive yeah yeah it, it seems like uh water and being <laughs> just monstrous Depend, mm -hmm. you know, d doesn't matter what description they had, just monstrous and and uh, ill-tempered towards uh, humans. 
what is, is a commonality. Yep. Yeah, absolutely does not like people floating around. These things are blamed for, I mean, everything from disappearances to cattle mutilations. Mm -hmm. Sounds at night. Yeah, yeah, strange sounds at night. And if it if it weren't for uh, all this, I mean, this is this is a hard one. This is what I really like about the bunyip. Um, in addition to the personal therapy that I'm enjoying confronting something that so <laughs> terrified me as a child, this is such a persistent creature in in australian mythology and lore mm -hmm. that there's been so much discussion about it that it almost elevates it to the plausible mm. you know like this is one of those things i mean is is there such a mountain of information and in, in reports of this thing because everyone likes talking about it or because a lot of people have run across something like this yeah. or or is this this is just the bucket. You see something. This is like Australia's Sandhill Crane. Oh. You see something weird. Bunyip. It's the bunyip. Yep. Yep. Did your credit score drop? Bunyip. <laughs> What's that sound in your car engine? Bunyip. It's probably a bunyip. It's yeah. stuck in there. Exactly. But it, but it is it is a piece of Australian lore that is just fascinating. Yeah. And even, I mean, you know, I, I say it's the Australian kind of like Bigfoot sort of thing. And then there's the Australian Bigfoot, the Yowie, which yeah. in some cases, in, in some of the research we've done, some people have just like, oh, yeah, Bunyip, Yowie, same thing. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I then, and maybe that's a good subject for a future podcast. I mean, because Australia actually has a very real and established record for giant mammals. Yeah. And and lots of different uh, species that aren't found anywhere else in the world. Exactly, like a, a giant wombats, <laughs> like real things, like uh, cave sloths, things like this. Uh, I mean, Australia, koala bears. <laughs> uh, well, Australia does have a, an, an actual established scientific history of huge mammals. Yeah, yeah. And its isolation means, yeah, some weird stuff. It's floats around down there i mean it is a continent hell bent on punishing those who live there everything is poisonous everything hates you <laughs> and if it weren't extreme conditions yeah if it weren't for their seductive accents i think we would have bombed it to death by now not really they're actually great people and their accents are awesome <laughs> um let's talk a little bit about the myth of the bunyip the mythology mm -hmm. involved that uh, implies we're going to get to the fact of the bunyip but I <laughs> You don't have to say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, come Myth on. and fact are the same word in this, yeah. in this episode. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes, this, this one makes this such a fun one. <laughs> now, the bunyip, the word, uh, is often translated as evil spirit or mm -hmm. devil. And it's also called a bunyi bunyi in some places. Wee. Bunyi. Um, so uh, there, there's uh, one myth uh, of the Aborigines that, that goes... The Bunyip was created a man, first of all, but Biami, one of the wisest men created by Rainbow Serpent, had him banished, had, had Bunyip banished from the tribe after the Bunyip ate his own totem animal. Uh, Whoops. Yep. So being exiled and angry, the Bunyip vowed to make life miserable for the tribes. Hiding in water holes by day, uh, the Bunyip emerged at night to creep around and devour sleeping people. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, some women decided to test his alleged evil and sought him out and were soon trapped into becoming siren-like water spirits that inhabited his water uh, hole or billabong. Hey, y'all want to live with me in this here billabong? <laughs> I mean, hey, y'all want to live with me in this here billabong? <laughs> That's as much Australian as I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> This is this even adds another layer to it with uh, having these these seductive siren like spirits that lure people into his habitat and then he devours them. He being the bunyip, right? Any any given bunyip in any given billabong. Yeah, there are a lot of billabongs, and each of them has a, a, a small bunyip family. <laughs> uh, so that's that's sort of one of the myths of how the bunyip came to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty fun. Rainbow band. Rainbow Serpent. Rainbow Serpent. Yeah. Sound familiar? I think we could do a whole episode on, on that. Which cultures had that? Yeah. I mean, 
Mesoamerica is a long way away Life with it. from Australia. Yeah, you see rainbow serpent in, in a lot of cultures. What you don't see is the serpent in the rainbow, which is a movie about zombies. And a lot of people don't see that movie. I don't see that movie. <laughs> don't let them bury me. I'm not dead. I, I continue to not see that movie. <laughs> but you know what is out on Netflix streaming right now? What? Iron Sky, the Nazis from Space movie. Shut your butt. No, I won't. It is. It is. I, I might watch it tonight, actually. I guarantee I'm going to watch it tonight. It looks so fun. Oh, man. So silly and fun. Iron Sky. Anyway. Bunyip. Hey, the the characteristics. Well, oh, the Rainbow Serpent. Well, we might even do a whole episode on Rainbow Serpents. It, it's everywhere. So yeah. there's got to be something to it, right? Right. I mean, Australia and uh, the Yucatan Peninsula are right next to each other, after all. Yeah, exactly. A lot of, lot of trade between the two of them. <laughs> um, I hope you guys wiped yourself off after all that sarcasm that we just threw. <laughs> but uh, the characteristics of a bunyip, let's talk about those. Yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest ones that I, I read about was that it had the, this loud bellowing cry, uh, which apparently warns people to avoid a water source if the bunyip has its gunya in it, and gunya is its home. Okay. Uh, but that's that's one of the things that uh, uh, is common with all the stories. Like, you know, you hear a, a, this weird blood-curdling scream at night or maybe even during the day, and uh, it's a bunyip. So um, <laughs> we, we've, heard, we've heard that before, and, and to a degree, the white settlers that were coming in were attributing all kinds of different things that they weren't used to screams included yep to you know oh that's a bunyip just like we said you know oh the fan belt acting up no it's a bunyip right and Cotton bunyip's in the carburetor and that's a you know you consider like the early colonists to australia coming in there you know it is like as i you know jokingly said i mean it is a it's an intimidating place it's huge yeah there is a, a large native population already. They're like, hey, we already live here. You know, there's there's a lot of very strange and unfamiliar surroundings already. Right. And there are so many things already actively vying for the for the title of I killed this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but why not bunyips? Why, why not? not? Yep. Uh, some people described it as being awkward and shambling when, mm-hmm. it, when it walked or, or maybe even retreated back into its billabong. Primarily, I, I read that they seem to be nocturnal, uh, preferring to hide in their water holes during the day and then go out and terrorize at night. And their favorite prey is human women, maybe because of uh, they find them more more easily catchable or something. I don't know. I mean, that's my favorite prey. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and they may also carry diseases. Hmm. Mm, me too. Maybe I'm a bunyip and I never knew it. <laughs> that terrifying. Yeah, that's a weird bunyip. We don't have have to do any sound effects for this. That's episode. right. I am the sound effects. <laughs> um, Michael Winslow of this podcast. <laughs> hey, David, Flora, uh, put down that 50 caliber machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down next to this radar screen. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got to tell me on my walkie-talkie. <laughs> Over. We are so talented. <laughs> we have our own podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't stop it. Great. Some of the history, besides the the mythology of it, the the history in terms of how it showed up in the the record books and stuff, uh, going back to a couple of fellows by the name of Hamilton Hume and James Meehan found some large bones in New South Wales, Australia, in yep. 1818. Hamilton Hume, yep. also known as British Englishman. <laughs> Uh, and uh, described the <laughs> remains uh, much like a hippo or a manatee. And you know what? Just to take a quick T.O. right there, you've got a large animal mm-hmm. 
somewhat ungainly. It's, you know, it talks about this awkward, shambling gait, kind of ungainly on ground, lives in the water, True. nocturnal, uh, comes out at night to feed. I mean, for lack of a better you know idea, right now we're pretty much discussing a hippo. Yeah. At this point, look, I mean, they're just talking about hippos. Yeah. I'll you know, point out that there are no hippos in Australia, but nonetheless. <laughs> they didn't know that then. Right. And yeah, exactly. So so he finds some bones. I don't, so keep going. Okay. A little later than that, uh, there was an article in the Geelong Advertiser in 1845 that told of some bones discovered near Geelong, Victoria, Australia, mm-hmm. uh, which were identified as belonging to to a bunyip by an aboriginal man. Yeah. So they showed these bones to one of the locals, and he, he said right away, that's a, a bunyip bone. Yeah. And I think he even drew one out for them. Yeah, and he he actually even raised the ante further. He's like, you want more? I know where there's tons of these things. <laughs> uh, so that was 1845. Uh, then just, uh, just a year after that, a skull was discovered in 1846. Yeah. And... Uh, they said it was uh, put on display as a bunyip skull. Bunyip in, fever is born. Yeah, in the Australian Museum. And it was on display, I guess, in uh, 1847. Yeah, and there's a huge, huge amount of interest in it. Now, uh, that was somewhat debunked, uh, as there were a lot of... I mean, when you say you have a bunyip skull, you're going to get some experts. You're going to get some yeah, scientists. You, they're going to look gonna, at it. Um, and they thought that it was far more likely that it was a deformed fetal skull. Mm. Of a of a of an animal like a, a foal, maybe a calf. Calf, yeah. Mm. Hmm. But that prompted a rash of sightings of it throughout the 1850s mm-hmm. uh, in some of the territories like Victoria, uh, New South Wales, and South Australia. That reminds me of uh, Jersey Devil stuff. Yeah, exactly. Remember, remember how they had that period where it's like everybody sees the Jersey Devil. Yeah, we're going to close schools because of it. I still would love to say uh, no. No school devil today. <laughs> devil. White settlers uh, believed the Aborigines, uh, and then, like I said, they did attribute all kinds of the unfamiliar stuff to bunyips, yep. including sounds and uh, if if livestock were taken or missing, you know, stuff like that, or if people miss were missing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bunyip got him. Yep. Look out! Look out! Bunyip got him. How that bunyip? <laughs> Oh, you got yourself a bunyip, yo. I don't know why everybody's from Maine that's moving to Australia. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> because they... Driving cattle. Bunyip got them. People from Maine are as close to we as we have to British people. Uh, I, I mean, that's the best I can do. Geographically. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what could this thing be? Let's, let's talk about what... Uh... Oh, man. Allow me to unroll this giant scroll of supposition. <laughs> Uh, it could be one form of an extinct marsupial, the Diprotodon, mm-hmm. which lived up until about 10,000 years ago, apparently. Mm-hmm. This, this is kind of like uh, experts that are, that are going and weighing in on this stuff, saying, well, this is uh, clearly a Diprotodon that uh, uh, was large, four-legged, and uh, lived in swamps and uh, billabongs and... Uh, that's my scientist expert. The, has the scientist been drinking? No, I have. <laughs> Did he have the a scientist. stroke of some sort? <laughs> but yeah, Diprotodon. Did we just wake the scientist up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. hey. what, what's going on? Diprotodon. Uh, Shut up, to mom. <laughs> large Hadron Collider. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Diprotodon uh, could could be. Could be that you know that's that's one of your uh, mega wombats or whatever, right? Yeah, you know? uh, undiscovered aquatic marsupial. Sure, and and living in Australia, being uh, secluded like that, maybe it could, maybe it could have survived for that long. Now there are some uh, some more um, mundane explanations. Australian fur seal, which is uh, known for its loud and abrasive cry. Well, what is that? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were asking me to. And and let's hear an example of that. Sound. Yeah. And what is no, it's a fur seal. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I answered the improviser's question and not the podcast question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were pimping another weird sound out. Of me. <laughs> An Australian fur seal, as the name might imply, is a uh, it's a fur seal. Oh, a fur seal. 
Yeah, it lives around Australia. So it's a seal that's furry. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, did, what did you think I said? I thought it was like Latin. <laughs> was like an seal. ursine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And other things. Uh, I think the fur seal, probably pretty fair. Uh, that's seen. cool, yeah. A lot of these accounts are just, people don't even see the whole thing. They just see it. Dipping around in the water. Yeah, or shambling around. Could yeah. be a walrus yeah. that wandered, wandered up. Could be memories of, of the uh, uh, aborigines that are passed down from generation to generation through stories. And mm-hmm. they're, you know it, it just kind of gets uh, morphed over time into uh, the idea of, of this monstrous thing. And then you know from those stories, people start thinking they see stuff and attributing cultural memory, basically. And you know, and keep in mind, you've got this this continent of Australia. You have a rising, uh, the the rising Aboriginal population. They're hunting more. I mean, we pulled a very similar maneuver here in North America with mammoths. Mm. You know, the, the, they, they they probably were these these terrifying megafauna that did get just hunted to extinction. And like you said, there is a great uh, uh, the Aborigine culture is amazing at passing down stories mm-hmm. and art and information. There's a very good reason to believe this would stay in there and, you know, it becomes their, uh, their mythology, Mm -hmm. but it's all very real. You know, at one point they were at one point. Yeah. Yeah. With, with giant wombats. Yeah. Uh, here's a fun one. Could be escaped cons hiding from the law. Very possible. People that, that didn't want to be seen. So they jumped in a, a swamp or a billabong. And then when they emerged, somebody might be happening by and see mm-hmm. this, you know, large shambling Hulk. Uh, also could account for uh, attacking women. Yeah. You know how cons are with women. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so so what became, what started out as a joke. So these cons decide to just escape out into the outback. And then, then they scooby dooed the outback. <laughs> I would have got away with it, too. Yeah. <laughs> that damn dog. Oh, I would have gotten away with it. <laughs> it weren't for you pesky kids. Hiding in my billabong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so what else you got? Uh, I got one more. Okay. Uh, and I think you'll you'll like this one particularly. All right. Could be mistaken for an Australasian bittern, which is a member of the heron family of birds, similar but unrelated to the crane. Mother f- sh- eating c- stupid ass. Why on earth would you sh- knocking mother c- licking f- face t- twisting sh- donkey ass wiping b- slapping f- faced asshole d- patrol d- snargling everything that is wrong with cryptozoology and people's unwilling to believe why must everything come down to this eating sucking sandhill crane sandhill cranes no not today at least it's a different family (laughs) but still a bird (laughs) it's found along the coastal areas i'm just tired now i just need a nap yeah. No. <laughs> yep. Uh, can't explain it. Might might be a bird. It's not a bird. <laughs> oh God! You there's nowhere on earth you can run from the tyranny of the sandhill crane. <laughs> you cannot. I actually I'm I'm gonna start looking for cryptids that couldn't be a sandhill. Yeah, crane. exactly. I think there are less of them. <laughs> Anytime we do research, if I see sandhill crane, boat, we're not doing it. It's off. <laughs> no more. I mean, this one, this one really, I mean, this one scooby dooed its way into oh the explanations because it, it, it masked itself as a heron, but you know, it's a sandhill crane. Right. Oh man. <laughs> you know, that bunyip is just a, a bird with a red face and. Oh yeah. You know, and it's, it's glowing eyes <laughs> and it's screaming cry. It's haunting cry. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, you know it's probably just you know what I can't even. You go to hell, Sandhill Crane. (laughs) You go to hell and you die. Um, Son of. (laughs) So that's that's what it could be. (laughs) It's not. I'm going with giant wombat. I'm going with giant aquatic wombat. It's funny because I you know 
I I never heard of that until we until we started really researching this stuff and like the you know they have the some shows and stuff out there that are trying to explain away the Mothman or explain away mermaids and stuff like that you know Discovery Channel but, yeah. but they never mentioned Sandhill Crane on on there you know what maybe you know what. I am very glad that you said that because I want to discuss just what you said. And clearly you've seen the same thing I have. The f- Discovery Channel, which used to be and still pretends to be a beacon of enlightenment. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Good points on them. You know, they, 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 they used to have good programming. Yeah. But when it comes to things like cryptids, they are doing the most inordinate disservice. I used to think that any attention is good attention. But now, like, they've made a mockery of Hunt and Squatch. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and, and ghosts. And I saw something that uh, I just saw it last weekend, but apparently it's been around for a while now, like at least a few months. They started making these these shows that are, they, they try to make it look like, like, like they discovered a cryptid or they've done something. They've made some huge discovery. And what I'm talking about is what you just referenced, mermaids. I watched this show. Uh, it was uh, New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. I had already come home from a party. Yeah, I totally go out and rock New Year's Eve, okay? <laughs> but uh, I got home. Yeah, I had had a few drinks in me. I was kind of sleepy. And boom, turn on TV, and there's this thing about mermaids. And I'm like, what? And there's all these interviews about how they found forensic evidence. They have pieces of the skeleton. They've, they've recreated the skull. They've, they're finding this ancillary evidence. There's interviews with secret people. I'm like, holy shit. Did they did they do this? Right. And I don't I don't quite believe it. And I'm watching this this show on Discovery Channel. At no point is is, is there anything to give away that this is a complete fictional work of crap. But finally, after a long time, I realize that that's exactly what it is. And I'm reminded of another show they'd done years ago, where some guys claim to have found the Carcadon Megalodon still swimming around in the ocean, like the world's largest terrifying shark. Yeah. Bigger than a boat. And why on earth do you do that? Like, it, it, I actually did a little bit of research on it because it irritated me. And one of the people that they kept interviewing, one of the quote-unquote scientists for their show, their documentary, mm-hmm. they kept listing as a NOAA scientist, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in Antarctica, I worked with the NOAA guys. They're great. And so they keep saying, they keep interviewing NOAA scientists. And it says so, blah, 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 scientists for NOAA. Because of this this ridiculous hoaxy show they put on, Noah has to put on their website, no, we have not discovered mermaids. Was it no, uh, we have not discovered mermaids? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> you still owe me. Okay. <laughs> so they have to, and, and, and what's even more irritating than Discovery Channel does a quote-unquote news article that says, hmm, why did Noah feel the need to directly address mermaids? They don't ever do that with anything else. What are they trying to hide? No, it's because you made a f-ing TV show that said they're real and quoted Noah as saying they were real. Wow. It, it doesn't, it, it's, it's just, there's enough genuine areas of inquiry. And for all we know, maybe there are mer people. I don't think there are. But why would you make a show that, that says we found them? It at no point acknowledges, even in the slightest, that it's not real. Yeah. And they use every single one of their documentary tricks. Like, and I say tricks because they use every format of a documentary of their other shows of, of, that are wildlife specials. Mm-hmm. And, and so they, they're building on, on the body of their work of, of nature documentaries to create a fake one <laughs> and never tell you it's fake. And Why it, should they? Yeah, and it it just it just pissed me off because there's a lot of people who watch that that aren't really critical of what they see. And there's a lot of people who kind of innately trust something like Discovery Channel who ostensibly has a uh, a dedication to to nature and science. Yeah. And but, every now and then they just decide just oh, I'm just going to to drop this on them. But now has a very big dedication to making money. Right. Exactly. I mean, this, it'll all be reality programming in two more years, so it won't matter. It, but. It, it'll it'll become what TLC has become. TLC used to be a phenomenal yeah. channel until it was privatized. Exactly. And I, I remind you that TLC, <laughs> the home of toddlers and tiaras, yep. 
still ostensibly stands for the Learning Channel. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. But what we should do is privatize more stuff. Right. And I'm very sorry to soapbox that, but... uh, it just it it just made me mad that the Discovery Channel would stoop to something like that. That's yeah. just gimmickry. And also, it, it pissed me off because for ten minutes, three quarters drunk, completely sleepy, me on a sofa was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> what? Why did I know this? We should do an episode about oh, this." Oh my god! <laughs> I gotta get floor on the floor. Wake up, dude! <laughs> Uh, going down, man. It, it's four in the afternoon. What are you doing? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's too bad. Yeah, it, and I, you know what? I think what is also fueling the, the 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 anger and the diatribe is that I'm not, I'm I'm not over the sandhill crane. Oh, and uh, and you know what? I'm going to invoke the ancient rite of blood sacrifice on this. Someone needs to pay the price for bringing up the Sandhill Crane. Couldn't possibly be me. Oh, I... no. It could and it will. But it was in the Heron family that I brought oh. oh, don't you try to lawyer me, Flora. <laughs> you know what? I sentence you to the penalty box. No. Yep. You're going to the penalty box. But you know what? Because you didn't necessarily directly make a mistake, you just offended my sensibilities. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're being punished for. Great. Well, uh, you know what? I have. Uh, I've got a little monologue. I got a little little thing here for you. Uh, I think our listeners might be familiar with the movie A Few Good Men, and uh, I think that you're going to go in the penalty box, and we're going to have to uh, the, hear the, the the famous "You Can't Handle the Truth" scene. Oh goodness! Yeah, you will be playing the role of Jessup. Tom Cruise. Nope. Oh. I am Tom Cruise. <laughs> As we do in all Now, of- I wasn't excited to be Tom Cruise because I get to be Tom Cruise. I was excited because he has like three lines in this. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm Tom Cruise. All right. You're Jack Nicholson. Great. So. All right. Put the old headphones on and away we go. <laughs> I take you to a courtroom. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to them. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth. Son, we live in a world that has walls. And those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. (laughs) Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You, we present Tiago, and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know. That Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while grotesque and (laughs) incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You don't want the truth, because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. I think think that you've paid your debt to society. Uh. (laughs) Justice has been meted out. (laughs) Oh, Oh, that... That uh, that didn't hurt at all. Yeah. I could do 90 days standing on my head. <laughs> Whew. All right. I guess I sand hill crane. I mean, I, I guess... Oh, oh, man. Son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> uh, Modern bunyip in Australia. Still a huge part of their culture. S- still around. It's more... I mean, it's definitely gotten more mythological. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's graduated kind of into that... Uh, legendary status more along the, more more so than like it's still out there snatching people although it's some yeah. people do think that it's kind of a kind of a lovable um mascot yeah. as it were yeah. and it looks like in the the current funzy you know <laughs> this isn't your parents the bun yep <laughs> the current you know buddy bun yep is kind of like a a, a it looks kind of like a little farcical dragon you know he's got a little yeah. tail and he's uh, he's always having adventures <laughs> watch out they put him on a stamp not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, a couple of versions of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you if you Google image uh, Bunyip, you're going to get the lion's share of <laughs> yeah of all kinds of images from that. What I really like, my favorite of all of the Bunyip uh, Google images, is the one that was drip that was drawn by a witness. 
by an Aboriginal witness. And it kind of looks like if you asked a four-year-old to draw a cow. That's true. Yeah, it's a it's kind of a big blobby uh, yeah. blobby looking thing with small head, big body, buck toothed. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, it's it's just a fun cryptid, and I love the idea of it. I love that it's. I like talking about this idea of regionalized cryptids. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to our Australian friends out there, if uh, if you guys have any stories about the bunyip or anything, we'd love to hear oh, it. Oh man, would we? If we if we got anything wrong, uh, again, we'll go in the penalty box. Um. Also, if you'd like us to fly out there. To discuss the bunyip some more. Yeah. I would love to go to Australia. I would love for you to fund our trip out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never been. Yeah. Would, would be a lot of fun. Maybe we could, that's uh, how we scam this podcast into to something you know more, a little more profitable. Like, uh, today it's the uh, cryptids from Japan. All the places we want to go. That would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, fly us out there, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Bring, yeah. bring us. Bring us. Remember bring us last week when all we wanted you to do was like us on Facebook? Yeah, enough of that. Well, the price just <laughs> went up. <laughs> <laughs> we got you hooked. Yeah, bring, bring us out there. We'll. Uh, I'll bring. I've got a camera. We'll bring a camera, and we can even put stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Um, see? I and, and uh, we're only fifty percent joking. Yeah, make this. you famous. <laughs> Oh, you guys are great. All right, then. I think that brings us to the end of this road. I think that we... I, yeah, let's... Uh, that, I mean, that's that's the bun, bunyip in a in a watery, shaggy, billabong nutshell. That's right. Uh, we've experienced truth and consequences. We've... Uh, <laughs> we've. I, I went on a, a tirade against cable television. We really covered I, a lot I, of ground today. Yep, I did... Uh, <laughs> An amazing Jack Nicholson. Yeah, you really did. You know what? You um, you took it like a man. Yeah. And, uh, that's the best that that's, can be said. That's that's the only way to, to be in the penalty box. It's true. Just yeah, to, you just, just have to stride take in it like there. a man. Uh, let's do some puns. And then... Oh, man. Let's get some puns going here. Do you want to start or you want me to? Uh, I'll start. Okay. Um, I've got a, uh, a, a watery, a, a, an aquatic home renovation business called Gunya Business. Gunya yeah uh nice <laughs> nice way to start now i don't know which one to do um Uh-oh. i guess uh <laughs> i've got a store that's all for lion tamers it's where they get their equipment and stuff it's called the bun whip oh god <laughs> yeah let that sink in for a little yeah bit. that's uh and Gunya business was pretty good, I think. Yeah, I was pretty pleased with that one. Lion Tamer store. They gotta exist, right? <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Uh, penalty box. Penalty box. I've got. Uh, I got one. It's uh, some very uh, high fashion Australian handbags by Depradadon. <laughs> they they might be made out of reptile or mammal. <laughs> It's hard to tell what they're made from. That's good. <laughs> My dismount was going to be about the Depradadon, but I don't want to. Oh no! Up on it. No, it's all right. I don't. I don't want to double up on it. I'm gonna. Go. I'm gonna go for the weaker dismount uh, oh, okay. again. Um, this is a, a Chinese home decor store called the Billa Gong. Oh, nice! I I'd like to to salute both of us. <laughs> For staying away from the pothead Philabong joke. So, oh, hooray yeah. for us. Yeah. Hooray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just great human beings, I guess. <laughs> let's, just, let's just break our arms patting ourselves on the back for a while. I'll, I'll do that. That'll give us a week to heal up before the next thrilling adventure <laughs> into <laughs> the <laughs> unknown. So, I have exciting news. Oh, really? I would love to hear it. Uh, I, You know what? I don't mean to jump the gun, but I'm already excited. <laughs> you stay excited because I can't. I can't tell you how excited I am. Uh, I have. I've. That's not going to work for a podcast. I, <laughs> I know. Uh, well, let me just say this: I've had to change pants twice. What? We have an explosion of mail and feedback from listeners this Six week. Six to midnight, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we uh, we have a ton of, of uh, stuff from uh, new listeners. Oh, that is awesome! Yeah, so uh, let's let's go on to, so you know it's legit. Here's mm-hmm. the sound for it. Classic good news, bad news. I love I love hearing the mail sound. Bad news is my fake mail is what made it necessary to put a seal of approval on the mail. <laughs> I'm the one that made us have to make real bills because well, of the counterfeiting I was doing. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's it's validity uh, is in hindsight. I think. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we we would have played the sound regardless. I anyway, know. to you new listeners, hey, thanks for thanks for listening in. We have one new listener, Greg. And uh, he has sent us... Welcome aboard, Greg. Hey, Greg. Uh, He has sent us a ton of puns, and for that we are eternally grateful already, uh, before we even read them. Actually, that's the... For any pun, you'll always experience the most gratefulness before you read them. (laughs) Those go for ours as well. (laughs) Those go doubly for ours. I don't know, man. I really like tile vortices. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know if it's because it's so good or is... If I just spent so long and I came up empty on on that one. <laughs> uh, anyway, Greg has sent us uh, a few puns, uh, and I'm going to go down through through the list here. Read them off oh, for okay, us. Right. His first one comes from the Rasputin episode. Ooh, all right. Ra ra Rasputin. <laughs> And he says, when Alexandra wanted to get all gussied up and paint the town, she was Rasputin on the Ritz. Oh, see, that is awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, he also sends us one from the uh, Illuminati episode. <laughs> oh, man. I am. I am. Welcome aboard, Greg. Once again, hearty handshake. <laughs> uh, so one from our Illuminati episode. He says, uh, it's a less known but a very important badge in Boy Scouts was to learn how to tie an Illuminati. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now he's covered the spectrum. <laughs> uh, going going back to our Rasputin episode. In Russia, when a guy thought someone was uh, feeding him a line, he would call Bolshevik. <laughs> Greg, I continue to welcome you. <laughs> This is truly where you belong. <laughs> oh, Greg, you you are going to be one of our Diamond Platinum Plus Plus members in no <laughs> yeah. time. <laughs> diamond Platinum Plus members. Not like those <laughs> old Diamond Platinum regular people. <laughs> and um, uh, Greg uh, sent us one more. I believe this one's from the uh, Witches episode. Uh-huh. He says, there was a great man named Vincent, and he was a blesser. He the had a shop. Coming. Blossom's coming. <laughs> He had a shop called Vincent's House of Blessing, and the motto was, where bless is more. Uh, that is, see, that's, that's like a product thing. Yep. Product, yeah. <laughs> bless has Products more. count, everybody. Uh, yeah. Feel free. Go, go ahead. Send it. You got, uh, uh, you don't have to have a, a clever tile vortices yeah. as, a, uh, as the name of the And business. if Vincent had to go out into the country, would he, um, would he be dispensing some ranch blessings? <laughs> Everybody loves ranch blessing. Uh, oh, it's never too late to pun, people. <laughs> Keep them coming. Hit uh, me I, again. I have one more, uh, some some uh, feedback from Greg or oh, some sweet. information. Okay. Uh, he says we mentioned the the Ronald Reagan Airport on the Denver podcast, uh-huh. and he says it, it's been around since 1941, but it was renamed later for Reagan. And that there aren't any uh, myths or legends unless being legendarily small and dumpy is one. Mm. <laughs> Zing, Reagan. Dang, take that, Reagan Airport, you jackass. Burn. You want some ointment, Gippa? <laughs> <laughs> Pull that burn. <laughs> burn one for the Gipper. Um, oh! <laughs> wow. It wasn't that great. So, uh, I'm now going to hand the reins over to you oh, for some right. more... Oh man, I've this got, is a, this is an extravaganza. This is a uh, pun extravaganza. Pun extravaganza. This man. is the, the best ever. You guys are here hearing it the day that everything got real. <laughs> All right, uh, this that's, comes that's every Monday. Man. This comes from uh, a listener, Kitty Pickles. Oh, Kitty Pickles. Kitty Pickles. Well, she's just full of the sauce <laughs> and sass. She's full of sass, sass sauce. and sauce. All right. Sweet KP, Sweet Kitty Pickles, hits us with this pun from our Apocalypse episode. Oh, great. It's a bake shop called Yeast of Burden. <laughs> yeah. 
Like Where is it that. located? Yeast of Eden. Yeah. <laughs> See? Oh, man. I, that's I great. It. That's great, Kitty Pickles. Yeah. <laughs> Kitty Pickles, I hope to, to hear from you more often. And, uh... Hi. This is the, uh... This is the voice for the lady listeners. I just wanted to say thank you. My shirt just fell off. <laughs> Thanks, Kitty Pickles. <laughs> that visuals on on my my end of the court now. Mm-hmm. Um, any, anything else from uh, Kitty Pickles? Now, most ladies would stop at a simple pun, even a highly entertaining pun regarding baked goods. <laughs> but not Kitty Pickles. No, she's taking it to the hoop, and she sent us an amazingly great uh, email. Uh, about our superstitions episode. Oh man, man, we are covering a lot of ground. I know. Well, this you know what? That's is great. That means people start listening. They're like, "Ooh, what's the back catalog? Yeah. I've eaten what's fresh. What's in the What's in the freezer? <laughs> what can I thaw out? <laughs> exactly." <laughs> Um, so, so she, uh, hits us with this. I just finished listening to your superstitions episodes and I thought you might be, like to hear a possible, uh, reason for the actors say break a leg, oh, which I, I would. Flora and I have been known to run amok on a stage or two in our day. Kitty Pickles tells us, uh, when I was studying Shakespeare at Middlesex University in London, name drop, <laughs> <laughs> my pinky just shot out. <laughs> <laughs> Boing! I was told the following reason for the phrase. Back in Shakespeare's day, after a performance, the actors would come out, of the, come out for their bows. As the audience clapped and applauded, the actors would bow at the waist. If the audience continued to clap, the actors would bow a second time at the waist. Mm. If the audience was beside themselves with joy over the performance and continued to applaud, then the actors would bow for a third time and bend at the knee or break the leg. A Ooh. swan dive, so to speak. So the phrase basically means to, to be so entertaining on stage that the audience cheers for so long and loud that you are able to bend at the knee for your third bow. Boom! Boom. Crack that egg and knowledge on your cabeza. In Shakespeare times. <laughs> <laughs> well, she went to uh, she went to Shakespeare Middlesex University in London. Dude, she wins. <laughs> she went to Shakespeare College in, in <laughs> yeah. Stratford upon Avon. <laughs> exactly. She stay, She went to Iambic University <laughs> in Pentameter, Englandshire. <laughs> Lay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the fastest way to get through there. Um, <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Kitty yeah, Pickles. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's weird. I had. Uh, I mean. I think break a leg has a bunch of, of different backgrounds to it. Uh, one of which I, I've heard is just that uh, you, you're inviting ill luck so that it stays away. <laughs> it's kind of a, a reverse psychology thing. Oh, is that like like when they, they say go to a bar and neg a girl? And you're like, mm, she's pretty hot. Go tell her her ass looks terrible. And then she'll be into you. Yes. That's an actual thing that douchebags do. Oh. Yeah. Well... What probably gets the girl is not the reverse psychology. It's their rock hard abs. Yeah, um, their backwards caps. Let's and their let's collars. let's stop this right now before uh, because this is a podcast about Loch Ness monsters and witches. How <laughs> to get a- girls pretty far out of our, <laughs> our field here? But judgment on douchebags, not not right. Yeah, it's, judgment it's well on within douchebags. our wheelhouse. Yeah, we can totally judge a d bag. I've also heard that uh, breaking a leg would be like uh, the scenery because they have uh, uh, legs were part of the the backdrops that got flown in and stuff. And uh, oh right, right. I forget why you you wanted to break one <laughs> because it meant that the show was over, <laughs> or it meant you you left everything on the court, bro. Oh no, no, it's because for hundreds of years it has always been the hallmark of a top quality entertainer to just trash it on stage. <laughs> Just start running amok. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Uh, anything else from uh, Miss Pickles? Nope, that is it. That is that is everything that Kitty Pickles wanted to share with us. Well, we thank you very much, Kitty Pickles, for listening yeah, and, and sending that stuff in. Keep them rolling, man. I have one more, one more thing uh, from a listener. This is uh, this is a new listener again. What? I um. Uh, I, I'm not uh, not sure if this is the real name, but the the name that was sent is Stella Believing. Oh, <laughs> so you I already... hope it is. I hope it's someone, and that's their name, and they're like, "Yeah, I get it. I get it. I would just like to buy some coffee, please." <laughs> hey, did you know that Stella Believing? <laughs> <laughs> but for the record, if she's in a hurry, 
She could literally just sing Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> um, I love you, Stella. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, so Stella sends us a story uh, and says, When I was in grade school, someone brought a Ouija board to school. I had never seen one before nor heard of one, but I participated in the activity. Which is to say, your soul was intact up until this moment. <laughs> of course, I asked it who I would marry, and it spelled out around five letters. I didn't know anyone by that name, and actually the name didn't make sense. Forgot about it. Years later, I'm married, and for some reason, that episode with the Ouija board came back to me. The name the Ouija board gave me was almost what my last name is now. Coincidence? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't think so. Wow. That's pretty fun, huh? Who would have thought that, I mean... It's Who would have thought a divination device would tell the future? Well, that, and when you're a I'm kid, when, when Ouija board spells out... The leaving. The leaving. The leaving. You're like, what? Is that even a last name? <laughs> it is for Stella. That's great. Uh, thanks thanks for sending that story in, Stella Believing. Yeah. Maybe she said that to the Ouija board. Don't stop at the leaving. <laughs> I need more information. <laughs> Never sing it a ghost or a spirit. It no. infuriates them. <laughs> they get so angry. Did we cover that in our ghost episode? The taxonomy? No. no. No, we should have told people what to do <laughs> and what not to do. How do, do you do. handle a ghost? Ghosts, do's and don'ts. Next time on Blurry Photos. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I think uh, I think this roller coaster has has gotten back to uh, yeah. what, what's the thing that the station the platform the platform yeah the that's, line that's lame. Well, it's gotten back to whatever the thing wherever you get on it at yeah, which exactly. may have a cool name, and if it doesn't, it should. Family so. Tostentavros, por favor. <laughs> I did not. I just made that up. That wasn't Spanish. And it says something about Fermi los centavos. Close your 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 legs. <laughs> <laughs> is that for a name or is that what you get told when you exit i don't know like i was in disney world a few months ago and my favorite part is there's some warning about your arms and it's obviously it's something to keep your arms and legs inside and the haunted mansion they try to make it scary and so so it says something something manos e los brazos <laughs> it's my favorite part you could lose your arms and hands. Yeah. Brussels. <laughs> best. I mean, there's like 10 million best parts to the Haunted Mansion. Hands down my favorite thing at Disney World. When this when this hot track drops, I'll be going to Disney World in like two days. Oh, dude, you need to rock that like nobody's business. I'll, I'll do it. I'll go to the to the Hannon Mansion and uh, mm -hmm. and I'll keep my brazos y manos <laughs> inside. Yeah, that place is El full Conte. of hanks. Is what? That, that mansion's full of haints. <laughs> well, this is one hard ticket that's going to be <laughs> braving all of them. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Man, you see you see what your your emails to us and, and contact does? It, it gets us all excited and mm -hmm. happy. And we are invigorated. Uh, Bunyip ain't got nothing on, on these <laughs> pun caravan. So true. Oh, man. I don't have anything else. So um, since my brain's been melted from the penalty box, uh, you can help You can help me by going yeah. to our Facebook page, liking us, sending us an email through the contact information on yeah. blurryphotos.org. Mm -hmm. Go into iTunes, subscribing, rating, commenting, all that good stuff. Open yourself to our twarts. Yeah, from the Twi Twitter. Twitter us on blurry underscore photos, uh, and then eventually uh, join our uh, YouTube subscriber community once we get that up and running. And then our militia to overthrow the federal government. <laughs> we want the truth about cryptids, and we won't take it anymore. Rawr! <laughs> and we also want a gold-based currency system. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not this fiat. Uh, great. Uh, oh, I'm fair dinkum David Stecco. <laughs> Yeah. God, man, I really wanted to meet Australian women, and I just killed it. That is never going to happen now. Notice how I've stayed away from the accent all episodes. I know. I keep flirting with it. Much like I flirt with women, which is to say poorly and to no effect. And I'm David, not a Sheila Flora. <laughs> oh, that was really, that was way better. Oh, man. Uh, good eye. <laughs> Yep, mate.